Here's Steph Curry up top with the ball in his hands, being hounded by Jaden Springer. To break free, he drove downhill. Then, when he got enough separation, he slammed on the brakes and popped out for a three. Splash, splash, butter, baby. Now, I'm highlighting this moment because right after that beauty of a shot, Curry practically gets bulldozed by the defender, and listen to this. They hit up the video replay, and bam! They slap number 30 with an offensive foul for supposedly kicking his leg out. Seriously? For any other NBA star, that's an automatic four-point play for sure. But for Curry, they don't just skip the and one, they outright erase his three-pointer. I mean, it's nuts, isn't it? In a league where players can draw fouls if their defender so much as breathes too hard on them, Steph seems to always draw the short end of the stick when it comes to the whistles. What's up with him always being on the wrong side of foul calls? Well, today we're diving deep into this enigma to find out what's up. Steph Curry revolutionized the NBA with his marksmanship. The Warrior superstar single-handedly spearheaded the three-point revolution back in the mid-2010s when he started launching threes from the parking lot, from half court, it's gone! making it rain like the basketball gods had never seen before. Fast forward a bit, and he's bagged himself multiple MVPs, a handful of championships, and a permanent spot in the NBA's history books. He's a global icon now, with kids and grown-ups alike trying to mimic his every move all over the globe. It's pretty clear at this point that Steph has transcended basketball. I mean, just like how everyone in the 90s wanted to be like Mike, everyone today just wants to be like Steph. So you'd think the NBA would be all over protecting their golden boy, right? making sure he gets those superstar calls to keep him dazzling on the court as long as possible. But, plot twist, that's not really what's happening. Foul calls, which are supposed to keep players safe and sometimes pad those point totals, seem to have missed the memo when it comes to Curry. Officials are supposed to call these fair and square, but with Steph, it feels like they're playing a whole different ball game. And uh, to understand this discrepancy better, Let's examine it through the lens of NBA guard statistics, specifically comparing layup attempts to free throw opportunities. This analysis will provide a clearer picture of how Curry's treatment on the court contrasts with that of his peers. Now, to do this, I simply picked four random guards. Starting with Devin Booker, as of today, he's hit the court for 45 games, going to the basket with 155 layup attempts and earning himself double digit free throw attempts in 12 of those games. Trey Young, over 50 games, has made his way to the hoop 188 times and found himself at the free throw line for 10 or more attempts in 17 games. De'Aaron Fox, in 48 games, has a tally of 231 layups, with 11 games hitting double figures in free throw attempts. Damian Lillard, playing 51 games, leads with 255 layup attempts and has reached double-digit free throw attempts in 18 games. Averaging these four, we get around 207 layups and 14.5 games with double-digit free throws. Now, let's talk about Steph Curry. In 50 games, he's pretty much average with 206 layup attempts. But here's the kicker. He's only landed in the double-digit free throw attempt zone in four games. Not 14, just four. That's absolutely crazy. Peeking at the total free throw attempts, every player listed has crossed the 300 mark this season, except for Curry. This is intriguing, especially considering his layup attempts are right on par with the others. Sheesh, guys. Now, get ready for something even more mind-boggling. In a recent Warriors vs. Clippers game, every single Clipper who stepped up to the free throw line ended up attempting more free throws than Curry. No joke. Some might argue that Curry's lower free throw count is because he's primarily a three-point shooter, but let's break down the numbers from this game. Curry took 31 shots, 19 of which were threes. That means 12 were inside the arc. Here's where it gets wild. Not a single Clippers player in this game took 12 or more shots inside the arc, yet seven of them got to the free throw line more often than Curry. Seven. The stats are telling the story so bizarre you couldn't just make it up. Anyway, I need to circle back to that offensive foul called on Steph during the Philly game. Because, like I said earlier, they even pulled up the instant replay to scrutinize the move, deeming it wasn't a natural shooting motion. Now, let me break down why this call is so disgusting. Growing up as a huge Kobe Bryant fan, 
I remember how he used to kick his leg out during his signature fadeaway to maintain balance. And guess what? He was never, not once, penalized with an offensive foul for it. Same goes for Michael Jordan. Fast forward to today, and you'll see players like Lillard and DeRozan pulling off similar moves in games, often without any repercussions. And in fact, they even get the benefit of the whistle in their favor. Falling away again. That's good. And the foul. Yet, when Steph tries to pull off the same moves, his shots often get discounted. The injustice doesn't stop there either. Take an incident from a game against Miami, for example, where a defender from the Heat ended up right in Curry's landing zone. Despite a review of the video evidence, the officials concluded it wasn't a flagrant foul. Now look again. The defender didn't just invade Curry's space, he practically set up camp in the heart of it. Yet, all that came out of the review was a decision that it was merely a common foul. This is something that could have potentially ended Curry's career, and they called it a common foul. It's understandable that in the heat of the game, referees might miss certain incidents, but when a play as clear-cut as this goes under review and still emerges with a minimal penalty, it raises questions about the NBA's treatment of Curry. These aren't occasional incidents either. They represent a consistent pattern where Curry seems to be unfairly targeted by officiating decisions. Given his signature contribution to the league's popularity and revenue, it's quite puzzling why the NBA wouldn't take greater steps to protect one of its most valuable assets. Now, nobody except Adam Silver and a few high-up executives would really know the answer to this, but let's unpack the most popular theories that have been floating around. The first one suggests the NBA might just be over Curry's constant winning streak. With four championships and six finals appearances under his belt, Curry hasn't exactly been sharing the victory vibes across the league. For a league looking to spread excitement and revenue more evenly, diversifying the winner's circle could be key. One straightforward strategy to make that happen? Dial back on the free throws Curry seems to miss out on. I mean, just imagine, as one fan put it, imagine if he was treated like Luka. Then there's another theory buzzing around, hinted at by a now-deleted Reddit user, two words, Under Armour. It's no big secret that Nike dominates NBA sponsorships, and Curry, well, he's not on their roster. Could it be that Curry's allegiance to Under Armour puts him at a disadvantage? Think about it from Nike's perspective. Pouring millions into the NBA only to watch an Under Armour icon clinch championship after championship. Wouldn't it make sense for them to want their athletes in the limelight, nudging the league for a nudge in the calls their way? Another theory suggests that the NBA is focusing on nurturing new talent. This notion piggybacks on the earlier idea of increasing league parity, indicating that the NBA might be looking to diversify its portfolio for marketable figures. This strategy aims to secure the league's financial success in the long run at the expense of established stars such as Curry. I mean, the league thrives on its superstars, and with Curry nearing the latter part of his prime, coupled with his already extensive achievements, it now seems more beneficial for the NBA to spotlight other emerging stars to pave the way for its future. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I know, I know, some of you might just think I'm just spinning wheels with these theories. And that even after I've laid out all the evidence of Steph being treated unfairly by the refs, that some of you would still say I'm crazy, that he's getting the fair end of the whistle like everyone else. Yet, hit up the internet and you'll see loads of NBA fans noticing the same odd stuff. Like this one Bulls fan saying, Yeah, I watched Steph get ragdolled in the finals and get not even a whistle. It's crazy how he gets ref. He must have pissed off Tony Brothers or something. And if you do a quick Google search, you'll bump into videos screaming, Steph Curry needs better whistles, Steph Curry does not get foul calls, and the foul truth. There's a ton of buzz online about this, but if you're looking for my take on why, it's perfectly captured by these two fans. One fan put it simply, it's cause he's too good. If Steph got a fair whistle, he would be the unanimous go with eight rings. This sentiment is echoed by another who dives deeper saying, because he'd literally be too good. That's the answer. He'd be averaging 35 to 40 points per game during the regular season and averaging like 38 during the finals on like 70% true shooting. He's already arguably the best offensive player ever. If he got foul calls like Jordan, there would be no debate. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Just picture Curry getting as many calls as James Harden did in his MVP heyday. Talk about an unfair advantage. Imagine someone nailing 50, 40, and 90 and hitting the free throw line 11 times a game. That's not a game changer. That's breaking the game. 
the Warriors would be unstoppable for an eternity. But the NBA? Nah, they wouldn't want that. Because if that did happen, suddenly there'd be a new goat in town, and imagine what that'd do to say the whole legacy of Nike's Jordan brand. So yeah, my two cents? That's exactly why the NBA's been pulling these moves on Steph Curry. The guy was never meant to be this megastar according to the NBA script. That was the narrative the league was willing to give LeBron. But Curry? Well, he's just a 6'3 guard who burst out of the scene and was about to flip the entire script unless the league stepped in.